Okay, Taylor, are you on? Yes, can you hear me? I can. Okay. All right, and I'm going to add Bill. All right. And for those of you that are waiting, thanks for your patience as we just try to get some things coordinated. Hey, everybody. Hey, Bill. Give me a second to share the presentation. Hang on. Yeah, is it going to let you do that? I, I, it should, as a panelist. Okay, so for those of you who have joined, thanks for joining. Just give us a couple of more minutes while we get the content for tonight pulled up and give parents a couple more minutes to join in. Stay tuned. All right, Bill, I made you a co-host and Taylor, I'll make you one as well. And I think that might give you guys the the option to add and share your screen. Yeah, every time I try to share my screen, it closes the window. Okay. All right, so Natalie, I think I sent you the PowerPoint. Are you yep. able to share that? I sure can. Which means you're gonna hang out with us for the oh, whole that's meeting. Not, I was planning okay. on it. I was planning oh, on it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. And for everyone else that's on the call, thanks for your patience. There we go. Much better. Can everyone see that? Hopefully, I don't think they can talk if I'm the, yeah. Yeah, Natalie, do you want to put it in slideshow mode? Um, yes. Upper, upper <laughs> Where right. am I up right up here? Okay, there we go. All right. And then you'll be our, our Helper to click ahead. On it, got it. All right, why don't we go ahead and get started then. Um, hello, everyone, uh, and thanks for joining the Bexley Marlins parent meeting. So Bill, you wanna kick us off and then we'll dig into it? Yeah, so um, for those who don't know me, I'm Bill Litvin. I am uh, a parent of a couple kids in the Bexley School District and at least one swimmer this year. Um, if and uh, so I've been part of Marlins for, I don't know, five, six, seven years um, and have uh, led the board for the last couple of years. So I'm here representing the board and um, in partnership with the Bexley Parks and Recreation and Taylor and the rest of the coaching team. So I will turn it over to Taylor and then I'll be back at the end. All right, sounds good. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, no, one before that, there we go. All right, so for our meeting today, we have a couple of object objectives. Uh, the goals for today's meeting is we want to introduce all of the parents to the key contacts and the coaches for the 2022 season. Uh, we're also going to review the program for the upcoming season. So in terms of our agenda, you'll see that on the right. So welcome and introductions, uh, which I'll do, I'll finish Bill's portion in a second. Then coaching staff, I'll walk you guys through the coaching staff um, and who will be assigned to the different age groups. We'll take some time to walk through the actual program itself in terms of what our team does, how our age groups are broken up, how our practices work, and also give you guys the first insight 
to the meet schedule for this year, as well as other key dates. And then uh, Bill will walk us through how we communicate as a team over the course of the season and also walk through parent volunteer opportunities. At the end, we will open it up for Q&A and we'll be happy to answer any and all questions that we're able to. So I'm Taylor Pressler. I am the head coach uh, for the Bexley Marlins. This is now my fourth season coming back and uh, my third season as head coach. I'm very happy to be here. And Natalie, do you wanna give a quick intro too? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Natalie Mullen. I'm with uh, the Bexley Recreation and Parks Department. I'm sure many of you have received emails and whatnot from me. Um, but uh, we just do uh, the registration portion of it. Um, and then we work with Taylor uh, and, and, and the parent board on uh, just facility use and, and working through all the scheduling and everything like that. But as it relates to registration, um, if you ever have any issues that, that come about that, then I would be the person to contact for that. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you both. Okay, let's get started then. So next slide, please. All right, so first things first, coaching staff. All right, so as I said, I'm Taylor Pressler. And if I haven't met you yet, very nice to virtually meet you. I am the head coach. Um, very excited to uh, announce that almost all of our coaching staff from last year is going to be coming back this year. Uh, so we'll have Elise, Gavin, Atticus, Hunter. We'll also have one new coach on our team this year, uh, one new assistant coach. Her name is Rachel Rhodes. She's actually a teacher in the Whitehall School District, um, and she's been a lifelong swimmer and uh, lived in Columbus her almost entire life, I believe. We're also expanding our junior coaching staff for this year. Uh, junior coaches are actually really critical to our swim program uh, for a couple of reasons. One. It, they are usually the ones in the water, especially with the smaller kids uh, doing hands-on stroke and technique work, uh, helping to expand our youngest swimmers' abilities to compete uh, at a different level. And then also, it also creates a path uh, for future coaches as well, because it helps them mentor and learn from the assistant coaches, and it helps our program remain strong and create lifelong transitions so that we can always have good coaches who know our program, know our uh, kids, and know our community well. So with that in mind, Annabelle Long will be back as a junior coach this year. And then we have three new junior coaches coming in, Ella Kearns, Jules Klaus, and Stella Lifton. So we're really excited to have all of them. We will also have Libby Stadler back this year. Um, she's actually expanding some of her career opportunities this summer. So she will, you will see her as a substitute coach. Uh, as needed to relieve any additional coaches for vacations or other responsibilities. And she'll also be present and volunteering at meets. So while she's not on this list, uh, she will be coming back and will be um, a familiar face on deck for those of you who knew and worked with her in previous years. So in terms of age group assignments, each age group has at least one primary coach associated with the age group. The primary coach is the person or people in charge of setting practices, doing meet assignments and things of that sort. I take the older kids. So that's the um, 13, 14 age group and the 15 to 18 age group. That's the, those are the two that I'm primarily responsible for. Elise Fox will be the primary coach for the 11, 12 age group. And then Atticus Keels and Gavin Levine are both going to co-lead for the 9-10 age group. Um, Atticus and Gavin have actually been with the team for four to five years now, and they pair very well. And our 9-10 age group typically is our largest group. So it made sense to bring them both and, and have them work together again. Our newest assistant coach, Rachel Rhodes, is going to be in charge of the 7-8 age group. And Hunter Johnson is returning again this year and will be leading the 5-6 age group. Um, Hunter and Rachel will also co-lead co um, all of those practices. So there will be four assistant coaches on deck for the junior varsity practices. And I'll explain what that is in a minute as we get into uh, more of the staff. So really excited um, about this crew this summer. We're gonna have a lot of hands on deck. Um, I expect that we'll have more kids this summer than we did last year. Um, one, because we will have a bigger team. Two, we're returning to competition. And so I believe that this is the staff that will really be 
critical and foundational for making this season um, both fun and a roaring success. So hope you guys are excited too. I certainly am. I always love it when coaches come back and it just builds an enthusiasm for the kids. Next slide, please. All right, so now we're gonna get into the program description. Uh, this is probably the largest portion of our talk today. Um, and also as, if, as you have questions, feel free to go ahead and submit those and we'll get to those at the end. So on the highest level, our team is a recreational competitive swim team. We're open to all swimmers that meet our program requirements. Uh, swimmers do not need to come to us with previous competitive swimming experience. Uh, this team is meant to basically be a place for everyone who is ready to start uh, the sport of competitive swimming. Um, and we have kids that on our team between ages five and 18. So it really is a really fun dynamic group. We have the littles, we have the older kids who are in high school. And, you know, for parents who are new, it creates a wonderful community dynamic because we really do see those older kids being on deck with the little ones. They're, um, they become leaders, they become mentors, and it really is just a special place. Our team is a member uh, of the Tri-County Aquatic League. So that is actually our league, and that will uh, determine most of our meets for this season and additionally gives us all of our requirements for championships and things of that sort. I will walk through that a little bit more detail. As coaches, we work with swimmers to develop four competitive swim strokes. That's freestyle, backstroke, breaststroke, and butterfly. Those are the four competitive strokes within our sports. Now, there are a couple of requirements um, for, that we see as readiness requirements for swimmers. And these are really important, especially for the youngest kiddos. And so I'm gonna take a minute to really walk through these. Um, in terms of our minimum requirements for swimmers, the swimmers must be able to water, enter the water on his or her own. Um, that means without the support of a coach and it means without a parent on deck. Kids mature at different rates, both physically and emotionally. Not all five, six year olds are ready for this. And so, you know, please kind of take this and, and assess your own kiddo as you're thinking about signing them up, especially if it's their first time and they're making the transition from swim lessons to swim team. The swimmers also need to be comfortable swimming in deep water. And that means without the assistance of lane lines or kickboards or other types of flotation devices, they need to be able to stay on top of the water, stay afloat, move forward in the water and to be able to do so comfortably um, within their own comfort level rather. And then lastly, we do have a continuous swim uh, requirement, a distance requirement. Uh, this is actually tied directly to this, the length of the events uh, within our meets. So for kids who are between the ages of five and 10, they need to be able to swim 25 yards. Now, it doesn't have to be fast, but they do need to be able to swim from one end of the competition pool to the other end of the competition pool without stopping and without having to hold on to lane lines or anything else for support. For the kids who are 11 to 14 years of age, that distance increases to 50 yards, and that's because that's their event length uh, at meets. And for our oldest kiddos, the 15 to 18 year olds, that minimum distance is 100 yards. Um, so please, again, you know, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer them. We will also spend our first week of practices as a coaching team assessing all of the swimmers. If there's anyone that we feel is not quite ready for competitive swimming, uh, we'll reach out to the parents and we'll refer them back to swimming lessons. And that will include a prorated refund of your registration fee. At the end of the day, we want everybody to feel safe and secure in the water and to have, be able to enjoy the season. All right, next page, thank you. All right, we divide our team into two main divisions and this is what determines practice times. So starting with our varsity group on the right, the practice schedule is seven to 8 a.m. Monday through Friday. Um, practices are one hour for both divisions and we ask all kids to be on deck 10 minutes before the practice start time. So for the varsity kids, that means being on deck between 6.45 and 6.50, we use that time to stretch. The kids take that time to put on caps and goggles. We are in the water at 7 a.m. Since we only have one hour of practice time, we do keep it pretty, uh, pretty succinct and on time. 
So the age groups that count in varsity are the 11-12 age group, the 13-14 age group, and the 15-18 to 18 age group. And as a coaching team, we're really focused on the refinement of competitive stroke technique and the advancement of aerobic and anaerobic endurance. So that means not just getting faster, but being also being able to swim greater distances while holding, um, being able to do more strokes between breaths, having cleaner starts and turns, cleaner stroke transitions, et cetera. For the junior varsity team, so these age groups are the five, six-year-olds who practice on Tuesday, Thursday, the seven, eight-year-olds who practice Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then the nine, 10-year-olds who practice Monday through Friday, uh, they will be on deck uh, around 8.45, or I'm sorry, yes, no, 7.45 to 7.50, fixing up my times, 7.45, 7.50, they are in the water at 8 a.m. So again, we have a pretty crisp transition between varsity and junior varsity practice. The older kids come out of the water at 8 a.m. and the younger kids are lining up and starting their warmups at 8 a.m. The coaching focus for the junior varsity team is legal stroke technique. That's probably the biggest focus is we want the kiddos to have four legal strokes um, and development of appropriate aerobic endurance. So we're really working on speed more so than the anaerobic side. That's safe for the older kids. Now, there is one exception for kids that are in the 9, 10 age group. We do have kids of varying levels and we have quite a few swimmers who um, swim all year round. And for those kiddos who are nine and 10, there is an option to swim up at varsity at the earlier practices. Um, so if that's something that's of interest to your swimmer, please reach out to me directly, um, either the, probably the week before practice, we'll do an assessment. I'll talk to the kiddo and see where their comfort level best is. At the end of the day, we want swimmers to have fun. And sometimes fun means even if the practices aren't at the same physical level, but they're with their friends, that might be more important than bumping them up uh, to varsity, but we also have kids who would rather have that and they make new friends on varsity. So we really do take it on an individual basis, but it is an option for swimmers who do swim year round. Um, actually, uh, can you go back one more time? Thank you. So I did want to call out one thing. There was an error uh, in the printed brochure. So I wanted to make sure that all parents know that the five, six-year-olds practice Tuesday and Thursday, and the seven, eight-year-olds are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So if you have any questions, let me know. It'll be updated in the registration. Right, Natalie? I'm looking. Okay. Yes. It'll be updated in the online registration, but there was an error in the printed brochure. So just wanted to make sure to call that out. Um, and we do that so that there's more, uh, we're not so crunched for pool space. And also there's more hands-on instruction as well for both of those um, younger age groups. All right, next page, please. All right, so swim meets. So um, for swim meets, parents will sign up each of your swimmers in a Google form prior to each meet. And Bill will walk us through that in a little bit more detail in a moment. Swimmers can swim two individual events at each meet and can be placed in up to two relays on each meet. Um, the age group is based on the swimmer age as of June 1st, 2022. So that means if you have a kiddo that turns seven years old on June 3rd, they get to compete in the five, six age group because they're still six years old as of June 1st. Um, those are our league rules. And so that's where that age up deadline comes from. Coaches determine the events, um, the event assignments for each meet. And really our goal here is we usually start off within the kids' comfort levels at the beginning of the season. And then as the season progresses and kids have more practice time, but also more exposure to meets, we typically will branch them out into events that maybe they're a little bit more nervous about or they're not as comfortable with. Um, and so what we ask of parents is to please, uh, please work with us on that. Um, we, we do definitely take uh, the kids' wishes and, um, and, and their preferences into account, but at the same time, we also wanna stretch and grow them a little bit as well. Uh, if there's any concerns, you can reach out to us privately, but generally we will determine the events for the meets and uh, we're happy to work with the kiddos um, to make sure everybody's growing and learning over the season. Now, in terms of TCAL championships, so we are returning to a full season this year. Uh, we did not have a season in 2020, and last year we did not participate in our league meets uh, due to COVID. This year we are fully back with our league. 
So I'm gonna review the championship requirements. Per TCAL rules, all swimmers must compete in three TCAL sanctioned meets. There's gonna be six TCAL sanctioned meets over the course of the season. Swimmers must participate in three of those. Um, and that's to be eligible to swim at champs at all. So if, they've only, if they're only able to make two of those meets, we're not gonna be able to register them for champs. So that's why we're gonna give you guys the meet schedule now. Um, and so please, uh, please plan accordingly if champs is something that's important to your swimmer. In terms of the event requirements, swimmers may only swim two individual events at champs. Um, and in order to choose from those events, they have to have a 2022 legal time in that event to be able to swim at champs. So what does that mean? If we have a swimmer, who has uh, been at three meets and they really wanna do breaststroke at champs, but every time they swam the breaststroke in 2022, if they DQ'd, we're not gonna be able to enter them into the breaststroke at champs. They have to have a legal time during the season. We're not able to take into account any times from either previous uh, Marlin seasons or from uh, club meets or anything of that sort. Our league rules are very specific about this. So. Uh, once we have all of those legal times, we'll work again with the coaches and with the swimmers to determine those two events for champs. Relays are going to be selected by taking the top relays. So uh, based on previous years, I think we were allowed to take, I forget if it was one or two relays uh, per, uh, uh, per each age group. And we literally just, we formed the best relay based off of the 2022 times. So that one is something where we really are going um, at champs to get points. And we take that into account as well. And again, we only consider 2022 times for that. All right, next slide, please. All right, so let's get into some key dates and then also the meet schedule. So biggest, most important date is next Monday, April 25th, swim team registration will open. Now we are opening up to non-Bexley residents this year. So the first two weeks of registration are for Bexley residents only. So everybody will, everybody within Bexley will have first dibs, as they say, on the spots for each age group. Um, just as a reminder, a gentle reminder, the youngest age groups, the five, six, seven, eight, and nine tens tend to fill up. So early registration is highly recommended. We will open up um, after two weeks to non-Bexley residents on a space available basis only. So if for instance, the seven, eight age group is full after those first two weeks of Bexley residents, uh, we only have waitlisted positions on a first come first serve basis available for non-residents. Or if there's spaces open in let's say the 11, 12 group, then we would allow non-residents to go ahead and register for those open spaces. Registration across the board will close on Monday, May 23rd. This is a firm deadline. So again, early registration is recommended um, at, by Monday, May 23rd, we have to start submitting all of our rosters to TCAL to get ready for the season. And we have to start planning for uh, practices and other things. That gets us to the practice schedule. So we will start on Tuesday, May 31st. Um, now, we're going to be doing evening practices that first week. So it'll be Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. The kids are still in school. Uh, we'll be doing evening practices the first week. And then Monday, June 6th will be the first day of morning practices. And that will be our schedule for the rest of the season. All right, next page, please. Okay, meet schedule. We're gonna have a total of eight dual meets this year. Um, so with that, uh, we have away at Mound Builders. That's the Wednesday, June 8th. We'll have another meet on Wednesday, June 15th at Pataskala. That will be a home meet. Saturday, June 25th will be away at Granville. Now, Tuesday, June 28th is away at Hilliard. Um, please note that this is not a TCAL sanctioned meet. Um, so this is another dual meet that we're doing, but we, we want everyone to participate. It'll be a fun meet and a fun day. Um, but it doesn't count towards one of the three TCAL meet requirements. Then Wednesday, June 29th, we have a home meet um, with Groveport. The next following Wednesday, July 6th, a home meet against Pickerington. Saturday, Jul July 9th is the Jenny Nickel meet. This is always a very fun event. And it's also a fundraising event as well for a former coach uh, named Jenny, Jenny Nickel. But again, that meet does not count towards the TCAL championship. 
And then the following Saturday is our last dual meet um, away at Canal Winchester. So again, eight dual meets in total. Uh, and two of those don't count towards TCAL. So we'll have six TCAL meets, need to attend at least three of them, and then we'll have two extra meets this season. There will also be TCAL champs, although we do not yet have a date nor location for TCAL champs. We expect it to be, um, you know, sometime in the second half of July, and we will be uh, putting out notifications as soon as we have those details set by the league. But at this time, we don't have dates for the TCAL champs. Okay, next page, please. All right, I'm happy to turn it over to Bill. So Bill. Hey, everybody. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, communication, um, volunteering and opportunities to get involved as a parent. So with regards to email communicate or communication in general from the team, it comes one of four ways. So we have the um, Google email address where we will send updates and announcements. Those will come roughly once a week. It'll usually be a reminder of an upcoming meet if 4th of July is coming up and we want to talk about the parade, things like that. So roughly once a week. Note that that is a separate email account that uh, the team has and it is not um, any of our personal email accounts. So it's not an email account that we're on all day. So it might take uh, a few hours or till the evening for us to respond. The second place that we'll post updates is on the Facebook group. So that is a closed private group uh, for members of the Bexley Mar Marlins community. Uh, we will post there uh, at least once a week, again, with updates, upcoming meets, uh, activities. Um, so that's sort of where we blast out information are the first two. Um, the second, or sorry, the third bullet is meet registration via email. And this happens in a sort of a two-step process. One, um, you will be sent a Google survey that you will complete to indicate your indication or your desire to participate in the meet. Um, families who were with us last year or any of the years prior will know it's a fairly straightforward thing. Indicate your child, age group, what uh, strokes they are interested in doing. As Taylor mentioned, the coaches make the final call on what events the kids swim. Um, and those are due back a few days before the meet because what we have to do is then take all those in and the coaches work together to seed the meet, to make sure that we have the right kids in the relays. So getting those in on time is uh, super important. Um, usually the day of the meet, um, sometimes the day before, but usually the day of the meet, we're able to send out a, a, um, a sheet that indicates all of the um, events that the kids are swimming. And also um, at the meet itself, uh, kids can always find their coaches to find out what events they're swimming. Um, and the fourth bullet, and we hope that this doesn't happen, although it is summer and it's central Ohio, um, if there are weather related or emergency communications, we used to use a tool called Remind. Uh, now we use a tool called Team Snap, which allows um, the coach or or myself to send a notification out to the um, to the team uh, to the community at large. The meet's been canceled. The meet's delayed. We were supposed to start at 5:30. Now we're starting at six. Um, so be on the lookout for that. We'll publish information about how to sign up for that. So lots of ways to to communicate. I would just a reminder again that we um, the coaches and the board are not in these channels 24 hours a day. So if there's not an immediate response, we'll get back to you quickly. Okay, parent volunteers. Uh, this is true of, um, I think, any sporting organization that you or your families might be a part of, is volunteers are really essential for us um, to ensure that we have a good season, uh, to ensure that we have fun. We are, uh, the coaching staff and the, and the parent board are a small but mighty organization. So every meet, whether it's home or away, we will always need help. Um, these positions are all listed on the BexleyMarlins.com website. But just as an example, a couple of these typical positions are timers. So this is super straightforward. You stand behind the block, the starting gun goes boop, you start the stopwatch, you watch the swimmer swim, swimmer comes back, you stop the watch, you write down the time. If you want to be on deck and see a whole lot of swimming, it's a great place to, to uh, see that and participate at it. It's, it's super easy. It's fun. You only get wet once in a while with the big kids when they jump in the pool. Um, the second is bullpen and runners. And so any of you who have um, young children, um, this is a great place to get involved where we will figure out like if it is event six and we need all of these kids in the event six, the bullpen organizes all that chaos. So when the kids come up to the blocks, they're organized, they're in order, they know where they need to be. Um, this is particularly important for uh, younger children. 
So this is a great place if you have younger children to get involved. Um, you'll also meet a lot, of another, a lot of other kids and get to know who's who. The third one is ribbons and awards. So every meet we give out ribbons. We, um, uh, they're all done via computer. Um, so there's literally the task of taking a sticker and printing it out and putting it on the back of a ribbon and then sorting those out or handing those to the visiting team. And uh, so that's great. The kids really look forward to that. We also keep track of a few awards like um, we have a record we have a record board and then we have what we call goal breakers which is when kids have improved their times throughout the year so helping keep track of that super important super super fun and a, a thing that the kids really look forward to the fourth is uh, being a meet official and so if you've been to a swim meet before it's the people in the very fetching white um, shirts and blue shorts uh, who are making sure that the meet runs smoothly making that the kids making sure that the kids swim legal strokes, making sure that the competition is fair. Um, we have a handful of officials um, on our team. There will be an opportunity to get trained as an official for TCAL. And um, the team will be able to offset some of your um, swimmers cost. If you are an official, uh, get newly trained as an official and an official for three meets for us this year. So look for more information on that. It's, it's fairly straightforward. It is like an hour of training on a Wednesday night probably in a church basement somewhere or at a swim club somewhere, but it's good to know. And then it also gives you something uh, that you can talk to your swimmer about and make sure that they're doing the, um, the strokes legally. Uh, the fifth item on the list is meet setup and tear down. So um, if you've been to the, the Bexley pool, the Bexley pool operates as a pool. We roll in on a Wednesday night and turn it into a place where we have a swim meet. So we've got to set it all up and tear it all down so we can give it back to the community when we're done. It's super straightforward. There are a number of people know what we need to do, but we do need arms and legs to make that happen. Um, one item that's not on this list that is referenced on the parent board slide next, which we'll get to in a second, is concessions. So uh, last year um, and in the COVID space, we did not do concessions, but we will be back with concessions this year. And so there is a, um, an easy opportunity there to set up to sell Gatorades and chips and uh, pizza and whatever the kids want to have. Um, and that does operate as a bit of a fundraiser for us. So there's a way to get involved there. And then finally, the last way to get involved is with the parent board. And Natalie, if you can click to the next slide. Uh, so the parent board, which uh, I am on and have been in a participant in for um, a few years, um, we really work to organize the swim meets. We help fill the gap between the coaching staff and the, uh, the city of Bexley and the league. So we're really sort of the, the glue and the grease in the wheels that make things happen. So we're always looking for parents who want to get involved. Um, any support is truly welcome. And, but we are looking for those who might have the interest in helping with communications and marketing. So making sure everybody knows about the uh, virtual team meeting this evening. Um, finance, um, we don't have a large budget or operate with a large budget, but it is good to have somebody who helps keep track of that for us and then concessions, just helping us operate with that. But we will sincerely take all interest and all help. If you wanna raise your hand and say, hey, I would like to just help with one thing to try it out, this is a perfect place to do that. You can reach out to, uh, to me through the Bexley Marlins um, email address, which is where the Marlins emails come out from and is referenced in the material from uh, the city of Bexley and is also, uh, I believe, in the Facebook page. So those are uh, great places to get involved and help out. We do, again, I'll re reiterate this, we do expect that um, all parents volunteer. It does help make things go more quickly and more easily. And uh, we're not sort of chasing our tails and we can focus on having a, a great meet and a great season. So with that, um, I know we had a couple of questions um, that I think have been answered. Um, so we'll, open it up for, for questions. There is a Q&A function. I don't use Zoom very often at work. So um, we're, a Google, we're a Google tech place where I work. So, um, but there is a Q&A that a few folks have answered, asked uh, questions and had them answered. So oh, um, I, will, I will answer this in real time. Actually, I'll read the, the questions that have been asked. So. Um, uh, for a kiddo that's in the younger group, um, if they're enrolled in Jeffrey Summer Camp as a way to transition them directly, um, yes, they can be picked up by a counselor. Um, and that's something that happens every year. Uh, Jenny Nickel is at home for us. 
we will usually invite another team. Uh, we will invite another team to join us. Um, that team is TBD. The open questions. The other meet other than the Jenny Nickel meet that doesn't count is a meet against uh, uh, Hilliard. Um, they are not part of the TCAL League. They are a, a friendly team that has reached out to try to get to know us a little better. We'd like to get to know them. Um, so just an opportunity to have another friendly meet um, at another pool we wouldn't get to um, normally. Um, the next question is minimum number of practices that a swimmer needs to attend to retain good standing on the team. This is for a seven-year-old. I'll let the coach answer that. Hi, that's a great question. Um, so we don't really have a good standing protocol. We would recommend that for a seven, eight year old, try to attend at least two practices a week. Um, and that's really to build skill development as well as team camaraderie. So if you're not able to make Monday, Wednesday and Friday, highly recommend at least two of those days. Uh, the, the next question we have, thank you, Tyler. Um, the next question we have is, can older club swimmers participate in meets only or are practices required? Do you want to answer that one as well? Yes. So we do have a meet only uh, registration again this year. Um, it is only for swimmers who are swimming long course um, and so are otherwise in practices. We want to make sure that our swimmers are in the water and um, conditioned. Uh, so we are asking that they attend one practice a week. And so again, that's from a team camaraderie point of view. Um, so if you have any, if, if there's any concerns or additional questions on that, feel free to email me um, at the Bexley Marlin uh, coaching. And I'm, I'm happy to talk about the meet only option. Uh, the next question is for practices. Is the expectation that parents stay the whole hour or can we drop off and pick up? Um, I think I'm going to say I think that is a parent decision what they want to do. Coach, do you have an alternate? I, parents are not needed. So um, uh, I would be totally supportive if you want to go get a cup of coffee or run home or go do some exercise. Uh, we're happy to take the kiddos for an hour. Uh, my, my, one ex my one exception to that is that um, if you have a swimmer that is someone who's not fully comfortable in the water yet, that first week, we probably want you to just stay close. I, we don't need you around the pool, just go on upper deck. Uh, but if you have a swimmer who's like, ah, this is good, it's old hat, please feel free to go enjoy an hour to yourself and we'll take care of the rest. And the next question has to do with uniforms. Will we receive information on uniforms? So I'll, um, I'll answer this two ways. One, there's a parent information packet that we hit this high level and spoke to a lot of things. There's a parent information packet with much more detail in that. One of the things it provides reference to is the um, um, suits, getting suits for the kids, which would be your uniform if you're a swimmer. Um, and um, due to uh, what's going on with sort of global supply chain right now, um, getting and ordering suits um, sort of bespoke or custom to us um, would not happen in time for the season. So what um, the team is doing is providing guidance on color and a particular couple of places where you can get suits. So look for that information. And then I will also say with your registration, I believe it is a shirt and swim cap are provided as part of the registration. So you will be, um, you will be Marlinized. Um, and I know we will potentially look at doing additional spirit wear. Um, that again becomes a, what is logistically possible sort of in the, in the sort of modern um, supply chain place in which we operate. So um, we've got two questions. Um, one, my summer will, or my swimmer will miss the first week of practice. Can she still participate? Taylor, I'll hand that to you. Uh, yes, your swimmer can still participate if they're, even if they're going to miss that first week of practice. So that's not a problem. Um, please, what, you, what you will need to do is just make sure that you keep an eye out for the swim meet sign up for that second week of the season uh, so that you can sign your swimmer up for that meet. And then in the chat, there was a question for coordination with transporting kids to JCC camp. Um, Natalie, do you want to answer that? I think we sort of answered that before. Well, it, I, I think if she's or if she's specifically saying the uh, Jewish Community Center uh, as in JCC, not JSC. JSC oh. is our summer camp, Jeffrey summer camp. We do for Jeffrey summer camp because they're on site, but unfortunately, we do not have transportation uh, to JCC. So 
parents would have to, to transport from there. Okay, sorry, I, I missed that, yeah. I will add though, um, we do have several families that participate in the Jewish Community Center camps. And so um, there could always be an option to try to find and connect with those other parents and carpool. I know that's happened in the past. It's just not coordinated through uh, the Bexley Parks and Rec Department. Yeah, and that's a good, like within the, the Facebook group um, to be able to post and see if there are other parents. Um, it's a, and it's a closed community. It's only folks that we've let in to that group. So that's a good place to check that out. Um, we have a question about um, timing for meets to help with planning what times to meet usually begin. Um, I yeah. knew this before, but I can't remember the timing. I got you, Bill. I got you on this one. So if it's a whole meet, um, we do we start our warm ups at five o'clock and the meet starts at six. If it's an away meet uh, during the week, then the war as an away team, a visiting team, our warm ups would be at five thirty and the meet would start at six. I believe for the Saturday meets, it's seven thirty with an eight o'clock start time. Um, I will need to double check Saturday morning meets. It, it'll be in the uh, parent packet. I believe. Okay, evening practice time, coach. Oh, yes, uh, great question. And so the evening practice times for the junior varsity swimmers are gonna be 6.30 to 7.30 and for the varsity swimmers will be 7.30 to 8.30 that first week, May 31st, June 1st, June 2nd. So we're going to switch just to just to reiterate that JV will swim first, uh, six thirty to seven thirty. The, the smaller kids need to go to bed sooner. Uh, the older kids, eleven and up, will swim seven thirty to eight thirty that first week, and then we will start our regular morning practice routines on Monday, June sixth. All right. Well, I don't think we have any other questions in the Q and A. Um, I'm going to remind everybody of the um, the Bexley Marlins swim team email address is Bexley Marlins swim team, all jammed together one word at gmail.com. Bexley Marlins swim team at gmail.com. So there's two S's in there in the middle, Marlins and swim, and the coach's email address is Bex Marlin B E X Marlin dot coach at gmail.com. So if there's a question about practice or my swimmer, um, age groups, things like that, um, please address those to the coach. If there's um, an overwhelming desire to volunteer and to raise your hands, um, you can address those to the, uh, the team itself, which comes to the parent board. Um, but I am, um, both as a parent and as a member of the board, I'm, I'm excited for summer to be here. It was 37 degrees here in, in Central Ohio this morning. Um, I know, but it's going to be 80 degrees this weekend, and that's the big sign that summer's on its way. So I'm excited for swimming. I, I know I speak for the board, and um, I know Taylor is as well. Yeah, I, I, I love coaching. It's, um, it's my favorite thing to do. It's why I keep doing it uh, so many, after so many years. Um, and just to kind of put the, the topping on our meeting today, this team is a really special place. It's a really special community. And our goal as coaches is to make sure every kiddo has a safe space on this team, whether they're uh, an accomplished swimmer who swims all year round, whether, um, or they're new and they're just doing it because their friends are doing it or they want to try it out as a sport. We want to make sure Every kiddo, uh, no matter where they are in their athletic ability for the sport, um, has a safe space and has a place where they can come, they can have fun, they can enjoy. That's really what this season's about and they can learn. So uh, this is, I'm really excited to be back and I'm really, really excited and looking forward to the end of May. Awesome. Thanks coach. Um, thanks Natalie. We will, um, this was recorded, so we will uh, post this to the uh, Facebook group for everybody to have access to. And as I mentioned before, and Taylor reiterated, Coach Taylor re reiterated, we do have a parent packet. Um, we'll probably give it a, a look over tonight to make sure it takes into account any questions that came up on this call. And we will um, publish that this week as well. So we look forward to seeing all you guys this summer. Um, registration starts on Monday.
and let's go Marlins. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.